You're going to sink in. My soil's too soft. It's, not, it's ridiculous. My poor ajuga. Yeah. <laughs> Over, we're on? Yeah. Okay. Oh, how about that? Okay. Hey, welcome back. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to talk about containers some more. This, we haven't this, done this before. We haven't done this before. This is number three, right? Three, oh, yeah, I think three, so. Yeah. Three, three or four. And <clears throat> we're going to keep it in the, in the, are we on? Can you hear us? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're good. Now we're on. We're start back. Over. Yes. Let's, let's, let's start over. We've got time. We've got all day. Um, you're at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Uh, the weather has taken a little bit of a turn, but it's not going to dampen our spirits. Oh, it is cool now that we're in the hot part of the border. It, it's cool. We're in the hot part of the border. Um, hot in color and heart in temperature. Hot in temperature. Um, Tim with the t-shirt on. <laughs> and we're going to continue with themes of containers. Um, and because we're in the hot border, we're going to use some hot colors. And we're also going to use a specimen tree. We've talked about putting more woody things in, things that are more kind of permanent. And this is, this is something that we can put in here that's going to probably stay in here um, until we kind of decide to, to change things up a bit. So this is a lost in Cypress, um, a cultivar called Silver Thread. Very tight. You can see the nice yellow color, which goes well with the themes of things that are in here. Yellow is a hot color. Um, Tim picked all the stuff, all the companion stuff yeah. out <laughs> him, himself. Um, and it's stuff that's going to go along very, really, really well with this. So um, talking about containers, talking about some of the cultural things, because this is a permanent container, this is concrete painted <laughs> to look like terracotta. So it's extra special heavy. Yes, definitely heavy. We're, this is not something that um, if uh, um, Trace was still here, he could help us move it, but he's not. So this is going to be here. So recharging the organic matter is important. Recharging the nutrients is, is important. So when we plant this, we're going to want to do that. We're going to want to have compost. And prior to setting this up, um, I put some compost in here, mixed it in with the existing soil. So we, we checked that box. As we plant, um, in theory, we would add some fertilizer to it as well to boost up the nutrients for that also. So um, keeping in mind the level, keeping in mind the type of container, because this is concrete, it's gonna wick. The water's not gonna stay in here as often. So that's another benefit of the compost. It's gonna keep it more moist for a longer period of time, which is important. Um, this is gonna have to be hand watered. I don't think this no. links into our, our irrigation nope. system. We've got a, um, a hose behind us that we can stretch to this through the, the growing season. So keeping all those things in mind, um, this is a permanent container. This is gonna stay here. We'd have to get a skid steer to move it around. So using our bark chip mix, again, for that moisture component, we want this to stay wet. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop this out and then we'll talk about the other stuff that we yes, have. Yes, we'll get the big thing out of the way. Let's see if we can do this. Let me take that out just so I can keep track of that. It never goes that smoothly. Always easier. And let me get some media out of the way. Actually, I think I need to do that before I... Actually, I have this bucket here. I don't know why there you it's go. like... So again, we want to keep that lip more exposed so that when we fill this thing with water, it doesn't instantly run over. It goes to the lip and then settles down. Um, I think we had ants in this container yesterday. I'm seeing them scurry uh, around. They're, they're not the biting. They're not uh, fire ants is my, my happiness there. Yes, uh, mine too. Uh, I have had those in the past. They, um, <laughs> they, I have a proclivity for fire ants. So you can see the soil that he's taken out. Um, a lot of good organic matter in there, which we want. You can see some of the green, that's neutral coat, that's old fertilizer. And this is some of that um, Osma coat that we use. It's still in there, it's still breaking down. So that's, that's good. I'm gonna take just a speck more, there we go. And let's see if we can make a hole big enough now. An old root from a previous resident. So important with these woody things to rough up the root ball so that those roots don't just keep girdling around. They're going to go out into that nice, soft, organic potting mix that we have here. I should have waited to get that Manny Petty till after this. <laughs> I think I need to make the hole a little bit deeper, yeah? Yeah. Uh, let me get the, the second bucket. We have lots of air in this media, so it's like... The compost has made that also a good thing. 
I have a lot of volumes in my okay. I'm gonna step back and see what looks the best. It needs to come this way. Yeah, right there. Right there? Or? Yep. I think we can go a little deeper. Uh, yeah, I do too. Okay. Actually, so you can lift that out. I still I have some working space now over here. There we go. Let's try that. I think that's it. That's a little better. Yep. Are we are we uh, pretty much straight up and down? No, yep. we need to tilt. Yeah. There. We'll get the OK sign. OK. Speaking of OKs. So I have a few things that we can put in with these. Uh, so talk about what we have. So actually, I have a couple things here because um, we said that it's a dry planter, more or less. That is, uh, it gets watered, but <laughs> not every day. Uh, I chose some agave. This is one that's actually a tender agave. Um, Joe Hoke, I believe, is is the trade name or the species or the cultivar on this one. It's a uh, Des Desmetiana. Um, this is just a favorite one of ours. But uh, like I said, this is a very tender one. If we uh, the forecast had been like it was the other night, I wouldn't have been able to put this one out. Uh, I'd have to wait. But makes a great container plant for us here in the southeast. Um, and so I have a, I, right now I'll stick one in here. I do have two I can work with. And then I brought out a few other things. Salvi is, like I said, are great. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, just salvia um, microphylla. I mean, I think it was variety numerosa. Uh, no, Nurepia, uh, if I remember correctly, is what I have right here. I didn't bring the label with me on this one. But this is actually a fairly good size salvia microphylla. These will get quite large, and I love the fragrance on this. As you can see, wonderful hot color to go with this section of the border uh, in here. And we can space these out. They're going to get, those will actually get <laughs> probably two and a half to three feet tall. It's a, it's a bigger growing sal, uh, salvia microphylla. And it ties into our last talk about the bees. Uh, bees love salvia, yes. and we are interested in that also. And other pollinators like hummingbirds. And that, this section of the border in the summer, if you want to find a hummingbird here, this is where we're going to have hummingbirds. So, um, I also have uh, a couple kufias, which this is a smaller growing kufia, uh, uh, kufia cyania, and then this is Ashvilla. Uh, I guess the uh, Tony, I think, is the one who uh, has been selling this one, and I think he got it from somebody in Asheville, hence <laughs> the Ash Villa. It's been hardy there. We have it in the garden, actually in the ground in a couple spots now, and they're already coming up. Um, and they're not flowering it, but they're coming up. It will start flowering probably by the end of April, and it will flower till hard frost. It is one that just doesn't stop. It's a um, great plant as far as I'm concerned right there. I like things that have multiple seasons or long seasons of interest. Um, I did bring something else out, but I don't think I'm going to use this here because it might not like it uh, drying out so much. If I had a plastic container, I'd use this. Yeah. Uh, this is one that though, would fit perfectly well in this section. The, the colors uh, are This right is on. a great color. Um, this is a, a new uh, a butylon for us that I was able to bring back from uh, Washington last fall or last summer uh, from our friend Dan Hinckley. Uh, this is one he found in his garden, um, it, but I might plant this in the ground in this section of the border is what I'm planning on doing. But this is one he calls sink pink because it was growing, uh, it came up as a seedling outside his kitchen window. Uh, so hence uh, where the sink is facing. So. Uh, but I just saw this down in the nursery and it has really started to flower and it's like, I have to find some place for that. But I think it's gonna end up in the bed somewhere around here. So uh, I think, I think that's we're just ready. a connection to this container. But I think we're ready for spring. Yes. We're looking for, for, uh, I for mean, color. Abutilons have been great for us. I've had them both in containers though. We, I had some of the containers last year that did not come through the winter this past, after the nine degrees we had, but they had been in a container the three, three previous winters, no problem. So, um, like I said, though, this is 
hot uh, planter here. Uh, some interest here that we'll have throughout the summer months here. And actually, I'm going to move this let's, back here. Let's plant it. And we can plant that. And this, time. this will be in the foreground and that'll fill in. And we should have something that'll look nice here the entire summer. And then in this uh, fall, if I get around to it, I could swap these uh, agave out with something, say like oh, flowering cabbage or kale for that matter, that would give us a cool season, similar shape, uh, and some um, uh, color interest there through the winter months um, uh, as an alternative. And the, the salvia, it'll stay up and be woody. The kufia will die back, and I could find something else and, uh, and swap in there through the winter months for that as well. Um, because this is tender, I'm not going to rough this up as much. And we may end up coming out here and moving these things. Yes. We're not sure it, of the, the weather. forecast right now looks okay. It's okay today, but that could change like the weather's changed today. Um, also, word to the wise in a perfect world, um, whenever you're working with something like this, it would be a good idea to have safety glasses on. This is not as unforgiving as most agaves, but it still is pretty thorny. And working around plants, uh, you should have some, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Wear safety <laughs> glasses when you're working with these. Yeah, this is a much, uh, this is slightly friendlier agave than the many that I have in the garden, so. The longer you work in horticulture, your skin turns to Teflon. Yes, so I have, or, or hands are safe. Not, maybe not Teflon, um, leather. Leather, leather, that's a better, that's leather. A better, that's a better analogy. <laughs> you become hardened. <laughs> Physically and spiritually. I'm gonna actually simplify this a spec. So we're not gonna add any fertilizer because there's a lot. I'll show you folks at home again. You can see a lot of the stuff in there already that just hasn't broken down. And if we see things are waning a little in the summer, we can always come back in here and throw some in. So. And also we could give it a liquid feed. Okay. So uh, this winter, I mean, or this spring, now when it was late winter, the salvias were actually, the microphyllas and our greggy eyes and their hybrids were already flowering the last few weeks in the garden. Previous no, years, no I haven't seen them until the end of March, uh, the first of April. So, um, and I think there's probably, oh, there's one right down there actually in flower right now. Uh, right in there. So these are really hardy plants uh, that do very well through our seasons here. I think I need to get some more back around the agave. So a little bit higher up than I would want, but that's just the nature of... We can, t we can lift the pot and shake it down a little we'll bit. We'll shake it down a little bit. <laughs> just the nature of these big, more permanent containers the soil doesn't move as much. Um, and I did add some compost to it. Over the summer, it'll settle down just a yeah. little bit because the compost will start to break down. But, we'll water it um, well too, and that'll, that'll uh, help things out a bit too. Um, again, it looks a little bit sparse, but these are all gonna fill in over the growing season um, as the weather warms up, as they start getting water and that compost and, and fertilizer also also break down. It's, uh, it's still crooked. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes with trees like this, till the, those, to... those roots get established, we might drive a piece of bamboo all the way through it and that'll kind of keep it. Um, I hate when things don't line up, so it probably needs to go that way just, yes. a, just a little bit. But um, oh, better. It's still leaning, but it's not too leaning. bad. It's way better than it was. All right. What can we talk about for four minutes? Okay, the plants again? Okay, so I said it so quickly. This is a kufia down here, this one here. This is kufia cyania, um, or yeah, this is cyania uh, ashvilla. 
Ash Villa, you can't go wrong with that name. And then Salvia microphylla nuripia. Uh, so this is one of the little leafed uh, salvias. Uh, it smells nice too. Some of the salvias are a little pungent to me. This one has a nice fruity fragrance to it. So, um, and I enjoy that one actually. This one, yeah, it'll get, it can easily get three feet uh, on that one. And so, salvia is something that benefits from getting pinched back. So for the sake of like in the garden bed, we'll let this thing run. Yeah. In here. We might um, control the size. Let it get big and pinch it back really hard just to kind of keep it in a, in a realm in, in this container. Um, because salvias in general like it hot, um, they're super tough and adaptable. They do really well in containers. So this is gonna be much happier in the container probably than it would be in the ground and it may take off. So we can kind of keep it we can keep it where we want to. And that's another component of working with containers is you can Jimmy. do some of that, some of that manipulation. Um, you know, this is going to stay upright, but if you wanted to take some of these lower branches off to give room, I don't think we need to, but it's an option with, with a, some, of the, some of the bigger containers. Uh, that's a loss in Cypress. So uh, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm blanking right now. I got the tag right here. Um, yeah, thank you. Camus Cypress, Lawsoniana. And it's, uh, I don't know the cultivar. It's not that. Oh, I have it. You have it. Or I had it, I should say. Well, um, one of the things that I always think about with um, these woody con with woody plants in containers is something that uh, Coach Vince Dooley said. Um, uh, if you know Coach Vince Dooley, he's yep. an avid gardener down in Georgia, has a beautiful garden. Um, silver threads. <laughs> uh, so, silver threads. Um, uh, he, yeah, incredible garden, and I was visiting uh, with um, Magnolia Society. Maybe we went to we went to his garden, Magnolia. Society. And he has a big patio out back, and uh, lots of big containers with trees in them, some shrubs. But uh, and what he said, I asked him about it, and what he said was, you know, when I get a new tree. I like to live with it for a while before I plant it out. So he puts them in these big pots and has them around. And I loved that. So now sometimes when I have something that I'm, I really think is pretty special or I want to watch, I, I put it in a pot. Right now I've got a, a variegated, a, a white edged low quat. Mm -hmm. And I like to, I don't like the bare soil, so I always underplant it. Not, not like this. I just do a specimen plant. So I have I have a variegated loquat and under it I have uh, a meadow muffin origeron, which is a little mm -hmm. creeping aster with silvery leaves and little spikes of, of little daisy flowers. Coming into flower right now. And, yeah, coming into flower right now. I've got a uh, a dwarf upright gold uh, pinus mugo with uh, chocolate chip ajuga under it. And, nice. then, and then I've got a uh, Ryusen weeping Japanese maple, uh, all in blue pots that my wife gave me, but it's a kind of a tall pot and it's weeping over. And actually I want to find some kind of little pedestal to put it on so it weeps even farther right over. Around. I don't do many containers, but that's what I do. And when, when, they, then when they get a little bit bigger, I pop them out and I move them somewhere else in the garden and put some other special little thing in there. And cool. I, I think it's a fun way to, to use plants. It's great for if you don't have space for a garden, but if you have a garden, um, it's nice. And some are by my doors, but one's in a bed like this where everything's growing up around it and uh, it's, it's part of the garden.